my lovely, lovely imps, I need to talk to you about Baldur's Gate 3, okay? Everybody has been playing Baldur's Gate 3. I mean, it's actually crazy. Um, Baldur's Gate uh, had like an insane amount of concurrent players. Uh, on August 13th, Baldur's Gate 3 peaked at 875,000 concurrent players, according to the Steam database. Guys, that is, that is deranged, okay? That is a deranged amount of people to be playing a, a classic RPG style game like Baldur's Gate. For those who don't know, Baldur's Gate is a classic RPG that is built uh, on the Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition rule set. It is a the third in a series of some of some of the most famous uh, classic RPGs of all time. You build a party of characters, you customize your character, you level up their stats, you fight monsters, you encounter conversations and you have to roll dice in order to to uh, and you know add your bonuses in order to figure out if you succeed or not. It's that type of game. But let me just say, Baldur's Gate is something really, really special. And as many of you all will know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty critical of a lot of games that I play. And I'm particularly critical of RPGs because uh, I am very, very picky about RPGs. Most RPGs are very big time sinks and a lot of them really suck. I'm sorry. Some of you will hate me for saying that, but there are a lot of RPGs that are just a that are just ab, are absolute trash. Uh, they are very lazy with their systems, lazy with their encounter design, lazy with their writing. But Baldur's Gate 3 is not one such game. Baldur's Gate 3 is in fact uh, one of the best RPGs I think I've ever played in my entire life. And it's, it is, I have been having so much fun with Baldur's Gate 3. I have been addictively playing it since I bought it. I got to the I got to the game considerably later than everybody else. The game came out in early August. I was not even back uh, from my trip until the end of August. And since uh, I got back, I have basically been clocking hours and hours and hours into this game to the point that I am nearly at the end of the game and I have a hundred hours clocked into Baldur's Gate 3. Um, and I have enjoyed every single minute of Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is a incredibly colorful, incredibly creative, incredibly queer. I know, I, I know, the f high fantasy game, gay as hell, really? No, but I'm serious. This game is really gay. It's like really, really gay. Like really, really gay. And like I was shocked at how gay this game is. In fact, I saw a really great meme. It was like, hold on, let me see. Let me see if I can find the meme image. Um, this right here. Okay, guys, it's this. This is insane. Imagine a world where being gay the norm and being straight the minority gay short film reaction. This, and then it, somebody just captioned it, Baldur's Gate 3. And I'm not even kidding you. That's basically that's basically the premise of Baldur's Gate 3. Is Imagine a world where being gay is the norm and being straight is the minority. Yes, literally! Vermin says, me watching my player character get flogged with a mace and then praised for how good they're doing it and then offered aftercare and the praise of a god for engaging in BDSM. I am not even kidding you. This game, is it goes so hard. It goes harder than you imagine, okay? You, whatever you're thinking about right now as like the gayest thing you can imagine in a video game uh, is, is just go one step further, okay? It's, it's, you can be, you can be polyamorous. I, I, I had a four way with magical uh, elves in a, uh, in an under, in a magical fairy underworld themed sex room, sex dungeon, okay? It is un-fucking-hinged. I love this 
game, okay? Does it have pronouns? It does. And the characters actually re re respect them, believe it or not. You can actually choose, I know this is gonna be a real shocker. She, her, he, him, and they, them. And all of the characters throughout the entire game will respect your pronouns. <gasps> oh man, what a shocker. Not only that, but uh, it has free form uh, genital and body build and facial hair options. You, you can give your characters like five different options of genitals, no matter the character, okay? It is based, okay? Now, uh, this is just me talking about all the, the gay stuff. Let me just talk about some of the other stuff I really, really like about Baldur's Gate 3 and why I think you should go play Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, first of all, um, the music will rock your world. Uh, the soundtrack for, for Baldur's Gate 3 is phenomenal. Uh, most fantasy RPGs, sorry, but they kind of get stuck in the Lord of the Rings theme um, uh, realm of of, uh, of of music where it kind of just sounds like <laughs> you get that kind of thing you get a couple little tracks like that when it's when it's special when it's moment when you're when you're prancing through the fairy field or you visit the halfling hole then you get your lord of the rings music and the rest of the time it's off the chain they've got they've got a a battle theme that is just uh, 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 human shrieks turning into string instruments it is oh just amazing and oh, oh jade monkey don't worry there is a song in the game, I'm not even kidding you, I don't want to spoil anything, but there's a song in the game, a battle theme for a boss, that is a Disney villain musical track. Not even joking. And the boss isn't a joke boss. The boss is a really hard, extremely difficult challenge boss. And when you go into his room, it just starts playing a Disney... Uh, like like a like an Ursula Disney villain type song. Not even kidding you. Okay, it's amazing. All right. Just oh god, so good. Not only that, but the game has so much in it. Okay, and when I say it has a ton in it, I'm not talking about uh, the type of open world crap that you get. When, you pl when you're like, oh, there's 900 identical collectibles dotted across the map. I'm not talking like Diablo 4, there are 9,000 statues hidden in corners of the giant map that you have to find. This game has bespoke stories loaded throughout the world. You cannot get them all in a single pay playthrough. It's actually impossible to experience all of the different possibilities. Mo almost every storyline in the game has variable outcomes that are extremely complicated. I'm talking like, it's, it's really impressive, okay? And it is just loaded to the teeth with various stories for you to, to pursue all kinds of different things uh, from from really challenging combat encounters to uh, puzzle solving to uh, 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 you know uh, investigation snoop uh, I gotta snoop around and 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 do uh, uh, Arthur Corn Conan Doyle uh, stuff like that uh, it, it's got it it's it does a really good job blending all these things together to make for a really awesome experience but most importantly well, the most important part is that I love how gay it is. And if you get mad about that, suck it, basically. I think it's awesome when a game is unapologetically, joyfully gay, and you can feel how gay everybody who made the game was and how much fun they were having with it. I think that's awesome. However, I think the thing besides that that makes the game truly shine is that it is the most accurate, uh, experience in a video game that I've ever had to what it actually feels like to play D&D &D at a tabletop. Um, Dungeons and Dragons 
as a, a well, tabletop role-playing as a whole, because obviously a lot of people play games that aren't actually Dungeons and Dragons, but are, that are similar in spirit in one way or another. But D Dungeons and Dragons alone, but tabletop RPGs have grown massively over the years. Even when I started playing, I've been, I've been a tabletop role-playing game player for a very long time. The first time I ever played a tabletop role-playing game um, was, uh, well, an, an, an official one was when I was in college. I actually made my own when I was a kid because when I was younger, I didn't, I couldn't afford tabletop role-playing books like Dungeons and Dragons or uh, at the time I was really interested in the EverQuest role-playing game. Uh, so I made my own. And I used to play with my friends. We used to sit down in my basement and we would we had a completely nonsensical rule system that wasn't even based off of dice. It was more or less just vibes based. But we actually had booklets. We we copied uh, we went to our local borders, you know, the bookstore borders. We would go to the local bookstore and we would look through the Dungeons and Dragons manuals and then we would go home and make our own where we would staple together monster sheets. We had no idea what we were doing. We would draw little monsters on them and then put them all together and on the front we would draw a map that the which was where the monsters lived and then we would staple it together. Not even kidding you. So I've been into this thing for a long time. But when I first started playing tabletop games uh, in college, the, the official ones, the D&D &D ones, it was not a popular thing. Dungeons and Dragons was considered an extremely nerdy niche interest. And it was something that people were like, often off put by and had to be convinced to try out. Now, there are like some of the most popular online TV shows are based off of Dungeons and Dragons. Critical Role is one of the most famous uh, online like syndicated TV shows. I guess syndicated isn't the right word, but you know, the equivalent. It has a ton of backing. They're really, really popular and worldwide it gets, there's D Dimension 20 is another one, uh, D20 as it's called. Um, these shows are huge. Dungeons and Dragons has grown a lot. Um, and uh, so more and more people are familiar with tabletop gaming. Um, and if you've ever been a tabletop gamer, there is a magic about playing a tabletop RPG at the table with real people. Even if you play online, that magic still exists, but there's something special about sitting down at the table and watching people people with totally different personalities, totally different backgrounds, totally different uh, paths of logic, try to play a different character. They're role playing a character that isn't them. And then they're being confronted with challenges and moral conundrums and story decisions. And it creates this incredibly chaotic and magical environment. And Baldur's Gate 3 somehow manages to emulate that. It, you can never perfectly recreate it, but it makes a believable illusion of it in a way that I was really, really impressed with. Without any, you don't even have to play with other players for this to happen. It's just the way that the game is written. The game is written for, and and the, the quests are designed in such a way that it puts you, you and your party uh, into all these situations where inevitably everything is going to go totally the opposite way from the way that you planned, uh, resulting in extremely funny uh, hijinks, uh, all kinds of situations that you did not want to find yourself in. People get blown up, uh, people fall downstairs, uh, you're fighting a dragon and the dragon slips on a banana peel and falls into a hole and you win the fight in a single second because the dragon fell on a banana peel and fell into a hole. Um, you you you're 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 going to talk to the to the mayor of a town and one of your characters uh decides it would be a great idea to steal a piece of cheese from behind them and they fail so bad at stealing the cheese that they knock a cast iron pan down onto the mayor's head and the mayor dies that type of situation is the type of stuff that is replicated in Baldur's Gate 3 that makes me absolutely adore this game <laughs> absolutely adore this game okay it is absolutely amazing uh, another board person asks D demon mama have you been using speak to animal 
Of course I've been using Speak to Animal. Are you kidding me? I use Speak to Animal in real life. Every animal I see, I'm trying to talk to like I'm some kind of wild speaker, let alone in the video game. Of course I do. And by the way, if you're, if you're planning or thinking about playing Baldur's Gate 3, one thing you should do is always keep animal speaking potions on you for uh, that's my advice to you okay because let me tell you these these motherfuckers over at larian the game company that made baldur's gate 3 they really put their all into the animal characters into this game it is absolutely incredible absolutely amazing it is just so goddamn good. Vermin says the fact that you can do things like enlarge an owl bear and then levitate it up and then drop it to kill enemies is so, or then levitate it to kill enemies is so D and D. Yes, it is. There's so many ridiculous things you can do. There are things like someone would have their character go around the room dropping uh, explosive bottles around the room before you have a confrontation with somebody just in case the confrontation goes bad, so that you can shoot the explosive bottles instantly killing everyone in the room it is the most ridiculous game ever okay and if you think that you have that you've got it you've got the one up on the devs of this game you won't because they will put you in a situation that absolutely screws you over and it's really fun to fail okay this is a game where failure is where you are encouraged to embrace your failures. When when you mess something up and you're supposed to roll with it because it doesn't just it, occasionally you will actually die and have to reload. But most of the time it just changes the progress of the story and the writing is good enough to carry that. It is so great. Oh my God, it is so wonderful. Have you been speaking to the dead? Yes, I have. I'm a wizard. In my game, I play a tiefling wizard. And in fact, I'll, uh, I'll show my character real quick so that this is in the review because my character, uh, sorry, I have to, I have to swap out, I have to crop out uh, some of the uh, uh, explicit, here, here we go. I'll show my character real quick. This is my character, okay? She's amazing, okay? I love her, she's so hot and uh, I wish that I was as cool as my character, okay? She's amazing, all right? But this is the character I'm playing, and yes, she's a wizard. I love playing wizards. Wizards are amazingly fun, okay? Um, I can't show the full version, okay? Because this game actually has full frontal nudity and uh, lots of other stuff in it that I can't get into without demonetizing this entire segment, okay? Uh, it is... It is a really, really, really good game. And there's so much that I want to talk about. Um, but let me just let me just summarize uh, 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 the entire game uh, like this. It is a delightfully chaotic game that is completely full of life. The voice actors feel their roles 100% and they put their absolute all in. And the storyline, is actually incredibly, incredibly heartfelt. Um, it's not the deepest uh, a story. Don't go into it expecting to rethink your morality. However, um, it, the, the writing gets under your skin because the characters are so uh, fully fleshed out and also many of them are such bastards that you can't help but sit there and think about how the story is gonna progress even when you're not playing. I have spent so much time thinking about this game when I'm even when I'm not playing it because I, I legitimately don't know how I'm going to handle certain turns of the story. Um, there, you will be confronted with decisions that are incredibly difficult to make. Characters, this game is like manipulation simulator. Okay, the, a lot of the themes of the game are built around uh, how people in positions of power can abuse that power. Uh, to, to hurt you and other people. And they don't shy away from it even a little bit. I joked to my partner that this game is Gaslight Simulator, which has actually bothered a lot of people. Um, the, but I don't think it, I don't think people, I don't think you should get mad if a game decides to tackle difficult issues. Um, 
but this game does do that. There are a lot of characters in this game who will not just lie to you, but will outright try to manipulate you, and that is just a part of what you have to deal with, and it forces you to play your character. Uh, the way that characters treat your characters, the way that ca that the other characters treat your friends in the game leads you to make decisions that are motivated by actually thinking about the decisions. Like I said, it's not the most deepest game on the entire planet. It's not a, like a pathologic or a death stranding where it's, uh, it's, it's you know, t tackling the world's biggest political issues or, uh, or, or philosophy but it is incredibly, incredibly deeply written, uh, or sorry, uh, incredibly heartfelt and incredibly solidly written. So uh, I, I think very strongly of, uh, of, of how they decided to structure the story to force you to role play. Um, I think that's really good. Uh, so it's so Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, nice, so it's my childhood trauma simulator. Um, yeah, actually there is quite a bit of that um, in multiple directions. Um, but I actually think that they do a really good job with it. Um, like I said, again, it's not, it's not the deepest game. Uh, uh, you're, you're not gonna, it's not like reading uh, like, like uh, you know, a, a book that will change your life forever. But it's a game that uh, actively engages you. It, de it, it engages, it engages your, uh, your critical thinking. It engages your moral centers. Uh, uh, to actually have to think through the decisions that are there, even if um, it's not like the most political game that's ever existed. Yeah. Um, is it better than Disco Elysium? Um, uh, is it better than Disco Elysium? Um, in some ways, yes, and in other ways, no. Uh, th those two games are hard to compare because Disco Elysium is one of those games that's really, really deep. Disco Elysium is a game that like actually tackles um, like really, really big political issues, uh, but it also doesn't. It's not the same type of game. Disco Elysium is fairly compact by comparison to Baldur's Gate, whereas Baldur's Gate is basically like playing through an entire fantasy novel. Again, I haven't even beaten the game. I've been playing it consistently, and I'm at 100 hours already. Um, you will become very addicted to the characters in your party. You will care about them a lot by the end. Um, and in, in mechanically, it's way deeper than, uh, than Disco Elysium. Disco Elysium is a very shallow game mechanically, it, or not shallow, it is a very simple game mechanically. Uh, there are a handful of stats, um, and you can boost them depending on your clothes and, your and some of your decisions, uh, uh, but Disco Elysium is, uh, uh, is what I would categorize as a, a game that has deeper writing. Um, Neither of them is better than the other, in my opinion. I still think that overall it would, pr for me personally, because I prefer games that really go hard and dive deep into political questions and huge moral questions, uh, I would probably rate Disco Elysium still a little higher, but they're just so different. They're such different types of RPG that it's hard to compare them in that way. Very different games. Um, yeah. Uh, Baldur's Gate uh, is is awesome. It feels wonderful to play. Uh, it is not, I, I, I feel the need to be a little bit critical on one thing. One thing you should be aware of, it does have a few flaws. Uh, one of which is that uh, there are, um, there's a decent amount of bugs, especially towards the end of the game, uh, specifically quest bugs. Um, unfortunately. And I think that's just a product of the game being so massive that there's inevitably going to be uh, issues. Uh, but yeah, there are, I've encountered a couple of broken quests. Almost always I've found a way, I've found nothing that has like, um, like locked the game, like hard locked the game or, or anything like that. Um, but I have encountered quests uh, where you have to, uh, where I've had to go online to figure out how to basically break it back into place so that I can progress the quest. Um, there's nothing in the main story that I've encountered where the game like, I mean, I've played RPGs where there are ways that you can actually shatter the game where your save is ruined. I've encountered nothing like that in this game. There's no game breaking, like that level of game breaking bug, but there are some bugged 
uh, quests, especially side quests in Act Three, um, and also uh, uh, there are <laughs> there are a number of amusing but irritating uh, other types of bugs. Like for example, uh, a, like books that disappear after you read them, um, which is a little bit annoying because in this game, a lot of the books in the game contain valuable hints. Most of the most important information from important books will go into your quest log. So like if you read a book that has pertinent quest information, it will usually tell you that. But a lot of the hints in the game that are hidden in the books are, don't go into your quest log. Um, and so sometimes books will just disappear, and I don't know why, and it's kind of frustrating. Uh, there's also, uh, a lot of people have encountered this one. This is not a huge spoiler, but uh, minor spoiler. There is a way that you can put clown makeup on your characters in this game. And unfortunately, uh, the clown makeup doesn't come off most of the time. Which means that um, <laughs> for my game, t two of the characters in my party always have goofy clown makeup on in the background. <laughs> it's really fun. You can actually see it. Hold on, I can show you an example of this. Uh, it's actually in that image that I just showed. You can actually see here. Let me just crop this and show you the image of my character. Look, if you look in the background here, this character, you can actually see the white clown makeup on this character still. This is in like a really important cutscene, And what you can't see is there's another character standing right behind my character. And she also has clown makeup on, which kind of sucked because I was doing like a really emotional storyline the other night. And one of my characters had clown makeup on her face that can't be removed. You're supposed, it's not cursed count clown makeup either. It's just, it's just a bug. It's really, uh, my friend was like, oh no, you got juggalosis. And uh, yeah, uh, my characters apparently have permanent juggalosis. It was, uh, it was a little bit, <laughs> what? So clowns can't be sad? Yeah, well, I'm just saying that it wasn't real. I didn't intend it for me that, to be that way, okay? All right, so there's a couple of bugs. Um, and uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of quest bugs in the third part of the game. Um, and also one other small thing, uh, there are some very, oh yeah, and one of the class, one of the subclasses is completely broken and is not fixed. Uh, I believe it's called, um, oh man, what's it called? Uh, one of the bard subclasses is like, it just doesn't work, uh, which actually really sucks. Um, so those are the critiques that I have for the game. As you can see, my critiques are fairly minor. Um, mostly they have to do with issues in development uh, and not with the actual vision or, or execution of the overall game. Um, but yeah, I think, it's, I think it's bards of lore are broken right now. I think that's the one. Um, hopefully that stuff will be fixed over time. Um, but let me just say, uh, Baldur's Gate is awesome. I really, really love it. I strongly, strongly recommend it. And it, I will issue, guys, oh, there's so many things I wanna talk about that are spoilers. Okay, th spoiler warning, okay? Warning, this is, a, this is a really minor spoiler, okay? Really minor, but spoiler warning anyway for people who might play the game, okay? It's done. Spoiler is only going to be for the next three seconds, for the next 30 seconds. There is a point in the game where, uh, where a guy, a, a, a Gandalf, like basically this world's Gandalf, a, teleports into your camp. Okay, you find him wandering around in a cave and he's like, can I come back to your camp? And, and you invite Gandalf into your camp and he teleports into your camp. And he literally, they're like, he's like, Oh man, I'm so hungry. And you, one of your party members is like, will you just tell me why you're here? Like, why'd you come all the way out here? You're like a famous wizard, you're Gandalf. Why the hell are you out here? And he's like, ah, what a splendiferous question, my good sir. But first, if I might have some cheese and crackers, I have never been so famished in my life. And then you give him cheese and crackers. He's like, oh, my tummy feels very satisfied. I uh, thank you for your hospitality. And then he just turns and looks at your friend and goes, kill yourself from God. I'm, I'm literally not even kidding you. That is an event that happens in the game. 
He's just like, God told me to, God told me to tell you to kill yourself. Anyway, I'm off to the city. Poof. And then disappears. It's, it's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. And it's amazing. And it's amazing. It's, it's beautiful. It's perfect. Baldur's Gate 3 is amazing. It fully embraces the chaos of tabletop gaming, of real tabletop gaming. The type of nonsense, uh, it, it will never truly capture the spirit of a tabletop game. It never can, and that's okay. It does a really, really good job emulating it. And one of the best things about, for me, playing Baldur's Gate 3 is that it has finally inspired me to write another tabletop campaign. To be a little personal for a second, one of the most proudest pieces of artistic creation that I, that like personally, I don't really care that it, like it, it's never going to be famous, it can't be, it's not possible, but my personal, one of the things I was most proud of was running a D&D &D game for over a year with the same table of people. I played with the same group of people for over a year, every single week, with very few exceptions, and we would play for hours at a time. And I wrote that story. I was a custom universe. I homebrewed a, a most of the monsters and characters uh, in my own world. I wrote literal pages of, of lore for my own thing, and I'm very proud of that. And it's been years since I've done anything like that. And this game has inspired me to finally take a swing at, at running a table again. Um, I have played a lot of tabletop RPGs over the years. Uh, most of them was not me running the table. I played other people's games. I actually played official like Pathfinder. Pathfinder is a, a, a different RPG system that branched off from D&D. Uh, that's very popular. I played the like actual ranked play. I went to conventions and played with, uh, I played in an event that was a thousand players all playing at separate tables and it was coordinated by dudes with flags where it was supposed to simulate a giant battle on the astral plane where each table was a group of adventurers battling their way through and the the people and when events happened at each table the people would hold up the flag to tell the other people what was happening and then that was coordinated to the uh, event dungeon masters who decided what would actually happen after uh the result of the battle uh, came uh, like came out i've done that but it's been a really long time since i've run my own table and i have finally been inspired by Baldur's Gate 3 to start that again. So uh, that should be the shining uh, recommendation of this game is that it will inspire you to go play tabletop with real people because it is so good at capturing that spirit. Go play Baldur's Gate, please check it out. It's amazing. Even if you are not an RPG lover, you will find yourself falling in love with Baldur's Gate 3. I mean it. Uh, it is the type of game that can bring in even people who aren't usually into RPGs. It is just that good. Uh, it, it, it eases you into the mechanics. It eases you into the world. It uh, is stunningly beautiful. The music is awesome. The voice acting is stellar. You will enjoy it. There's a reason why this game got 875,000 concurrent players uh, a few days after launch, which is insane. RPGs never get that many. That's like the type of numbers that you see in a multiplayer game, in, in like a shooter where tons of people are online playing together at the same time. This is a single player RPG. There's a reason why so many people have found themselves hooked by this game. Go check it out. I have nothing, well obviously I have some critiques, but I have basically nothing but praise for Baldur's Gate 3. I would love to talk about more spoiler stuff, but I'm not going to for the purposes of this review. Uh, that's all I really have to say. Go, go roll some dice. Go roll some dice and get inspired. This game is wonderful. It's amazing. Go see a dragon slip on a banana peel to its death. Go slip on a banana peel yourself to its death. <laughs> Can I show, hold on. I have to show you another, <laughs> another image.
<laughs> okay, I'm gonna, this is not a spoiler, okay? This, not really. It's not really a spoiler, okay? But uh, the other day I did this quest and it was this incredibly emotional, emotionally written quest uh, for one of the main characters of the game. They were like, the, the, the main character is like, why, why did you hurt me? Just, wh why did it have to go this way? The betrayal, the pain. And then over in the corner, my character is just sitting there with glowing red eyes, charging up fucking revoke existence, ready to blast a bunch of little Hogwarts kids with the, the, the 12th level death spell. And it's just amazing, okay? It's just incredible, all right? It's, I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna fuck you guys up, okay? Yeah, literally, yes, <laughs> exactly, Vermin. <laughs> Hold on, there's an image for this. Oh no, this one has, oh no, this one has tits in it too. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> My character getting ready to kill evil Hogwarts, okay? <laughs> My my character about to cast Circle of Death on the, the kid who's in Introduction to Torture. <laughs> Amazing. Absolutely incredible. All right, everybody. If you like this review, first of all, please check out Baldur's Gate and let me know in the comments if you check out Baldur's Gate. Uh, and secondly, if you thought this was a cool review, press subscribe down below. I talk about my favorite games in great depth all the time. Uh, I sometimes get grabbed by a game where I just get so excited about it, I have to tell you about it. And if you want to see more of that, press subscribe down below. Thank you very, very much for watching. And keep listening for the signal.